think we're live. Hi, everyone. Early Shabbat Shalom here uh, in this December Shabbat. Hanukkah over yesterday. We thought we would come to you with some other kinds of ideas right here from our kitchen. You can see the ideas hanging out right here. How is everyone today? How are you? I think I'm doing pretty good. There's David. He says hi. Yeah. Yeah. I know he and Linda usually enjoy watching it. And uh, Nala's walking past around here. And we have a lot of stuff to do today. A lot of stuff to talk about. It actually looks like a lot of stuff. Um, sometimes when one person is feeling something, a lot of other people also will be feeling something. I mean, I think that we're all unique to a degree. We definitely have this very unique spark of the divine, but still we have so many things that are similar, so many needs that are similar, so many great things about us that are similar. And when Hanukkah is over and we have these days ahead, I wonder how many of us feel a little ungrounded. I wonder how many of us are feeling like, well, now what? And today's segment is about the now what. So I'm really happy for those of you who are tuning in. And I hope more folks will do that so we can talk about a little bit about the now what. Sound good to you, Barry? It sounds great, but I'm just worried that there's not enough, there's not enough stuff here. Can you believe this? Bang. Uh, there's not enough stuff here, Debbie. So where would you want to start with all these different things? Well, I'd ask you before we get going to join me in taking a breath or two. Uh, just really a big inhale through the nose and a nice exhalation through the mouth. And then notice one thing as we get going on the Shabbos show today. Notice if when someone brings up new ideas or things that, you know, are a little different. Hi, Steph. If your mind tends to resist. I know this about me, which is why I ask it of you. Sometimes I hear brand new ideas and I'm like, let me tell you the 10 reasons why that can't work. But before I open my mouth and you've heard that part, knowing what my mind already does. I give myself myself a couple of breaths, you know, just to kind of take it in and whatever. And so with all that we're going to show you today, you might, I invite you to stand back from yourself and say, hmm, maybe I'll, maybe I'll take that in. Maybe I'll listen to that. Sound good? So Debbie, it's the point what you're trying to say is that it's uh, Hanukkah's over. And it's not that we have nothing else to look forward to. That's not the case. But right. on the other hand, we're still in the middle of COVID. And there's things that we can kind of maybe experiment with to pass the time to keep us occupied and do something fun. Yeah. And since you mentioned COVID, I had this little note. Oh, well, it was that I believe the. What's uh -oh. that noise? Uh oh. Uh-oh, you know what it is. Should I check? Uh -huh. Two things at once. Okay, I'll tell you what's happening. What's happening is that the hall is ready. We had to bake it early. Um, I'm getting it over to a friend's house early. But we have a second one for us. And that Whoa. bread maker just went off. Is it ready? I You're seeing the hall away early today. How beautiful, Debbie. Is it really, really, really done, yeah, though? Yeah, talk on it. It looks pretty to me. Oh, I think just one more minute. Okay, let's do it. Just one more minute, and then it'll be all done. Okay, so as I was saying, so we're breathing, we're grounding ourselves, um, and we're thinking about these very, what appear to be shorter days and longer nights ahead, and things that perhaps we could do that ground us in Judaism. So, all right. There is a quote in this book here that I have my hand on, but I don't especially love the quote, so I'm not going to give it all to you. But here's one part before the quote. The much dissected Pew Research Center study of 2013 revealed that most Jews do not connect their Jewish identity to Judaism. And this particular author says, I wanted to find out if that's because we haven't really looked there. 
And I feel that way every single day. And then there is another quote, which I'm not going to give it all to you at all because, well, I'm going to tell you the long and the short of it. The long and the short of it is that it's a rabbi saying that a lot of us who identify as Jewish don't do very many Jewish things, whether that's ritual or prayer or study or whatever you think of that might make you Jewish. We simply by birth or heredity or whatever say, you know, we're Jewish people. And he went on then to say, I want, here's the word, I want to toil in it. And that's what I really wanted to impart to you. I want to toil in it also. Whether that means learning Hebrew or doing things with my hands. So this takes us back to where we are today. You got flour on you. No. Oh. This takes us back to where we are today, which is to ground ourselves during this time. Do you ever feel like that? Like now my mind's beginning to go away from me a little bit and give me the recordings that it usually might. What are we going to do with the rest of these days? Now we've put away all of our Hanukkah things. Well, it's not Rosh Hashanah and it's not Yom Kippur and it's a long time till Purim. And I love the outline. I love the rituals. The rituals of Judaism, which, you know, Shabbat supersedes all of them. They ground me. That's why we're here showing you the challah and doing this. But I want to show you some ideas and some things and see if any of them take or if you like or appreciate any of them. All right, here's what's more. Um, in my yoga studio, I have blocks and straps and all of these things. And as I started to teach this year, um, it felt very sad for me to have all of these beautiful pieces of yoga equipment on my shelves with no pr practitioners to share them with. So I start, started saying to all of my practitioners online, come get a block, come get a strap. It does me no good. Mm. And I'm not really certain exactly when we're all going to be together in one room practicing yoga again. All right, so I love to teach Jewish experiential, anything that you want to call it, particularly experiential or sensory Torah, really feeling things. So I want to show you some things, and I want to share the supplies that I have with you, and I'm really talking to my neighbors. So, like, if I don't know you and you're tuning in from Japan, this probably isn't going to work out for you, but if you're one of my neighbors and you know who you are, then you can come by and grab some of this stuff from my porch. So this is a big agate rock, and I have painted it here with this paint, and I have paint, and I have all of these paint brushes because this is a project I did uh, with Temple Emmanuel, right? And then I chose words to put on this beautiful agate, and I didn't paint it all the way. I left a lot of the sparkling rock undone. You want to talk about something that grounds you. So you know how you might be strolling through Facebook and it'll say there'll be light at the end of the tunnel or another little saying will be don't put off till tomorrow. Doesn't move me. None of those things really move me. We took it out. Yeah. yeah what moves me is what I can find myself um, in the Torah. And I keep a lot of those. So I keep things like on index cards. Um, when I read something in a prayer book, I'll be sure to mark it for later and go back because I want to put my hands on it. I want to hold it. I really am a sensory person. I want to see it. I want to smell it. I want to hear it, things like that. Nothing is more grounding to me than taking something meaningful and actually putting it on a rock. So here's how you do it. Hi, Mike. So here's how you do it. Did you get some pickleball in today, Mike? You're going to come to my house if you want to, and I have these gorgeous agates, and I'm putting them on my front porch bench. Okay, let me ask you about the agate. Hi, Connie. So, if I'm not saying to do this, but if I took a hammer, what happens to you? They're not, they're not necessarily geodes at all. But okay. there, are, there are some agates, certainly, that are geodes, but a lot of them aren't. But you're going to pick out a stone, and you're going to paint it white. And I have paint brushes. I don't have enough white paint for everyone, but I do have lots of black markers. I have so much stuff because I walked around and taught this way with all of these experiences. And some of them I just want you to dream up and take some of these dark days and really think about what would be grounding for you to make or to do Jewishly. That's the caveat. Something Debbie. that connects you to your... I forgot that I did this. You did this. It took And it's from well. Deuteronomy. It says, Cursed be he who will blot, who will not uphold thee 
terms of this can you read this well yeah you like you like oh barry likes uh barry likes oh. <laughs> cursed be he who will not uphold the terms of this teaching and observe them and all the people's all the people will say amen amen mm -hmm. um, mine is from deuteronomy and i wrote it's chapter 29 verse 13 i make this covenant with its sanctions not with you alone but both with those who are standing here with us this day before the Lord our God and with those who are not with us here this day because that reminds me that I am included here. I am part of what went down at Mount Sinai. So you talk about grounding. I know why I'm here. This is really one of the most special things I own and I made it myself and I want to give you the same opportunity during these days. All right, I have some other stuff. And I'm telling you, I'm going to put a slew of things out on my front porch. And I really hope that you'll take me up on this. I don't want to thank you note. I don't want you to ring my bell. I just want you to gather up what makes sense to you that would be grounding. This is phenomenal. I bought tons of these and worked with so many classes on this. You know, the message in the bottle. But the message in the bottle, when you come and you take a piece of my paper that looks like it could be a uh, Torah right could be parchment and this it doesn't it's not coming off very good I can see on the device but you'll have to decide what is it that goes in here and I always sprinkle stones at the bottom maybe you like that maybe you don't maybe yours is going to be filled with water and there'll be some essential oils in there that are uh, from the time of the Bible um, and then I have these and they're uh, plexiglass and you'll take the sticker off and they're really clear and I do things on them like Aaron's breastplate or maybe just one stone where you could see it this one uh, of course is the Shema is it says Shema and Shema means listen so I would often just glue a stone here why why not just lay it down because I'm gonna elevate it a little bit so when I look at it, I realize this isn't just something I've put on my counter. I'm going to elevate how I want those words to feel and, and how significant they are. Um, Is I'm, that a regular poem? No. This I did with stones, and, um, and this one happens to be a haiku. And so you could definitely work with haikus. You could work with... Haiku is a poem of sorts, 575. Five. I bet you guys did all that in school. Oh, all the time all the time right so here's all these kinds of agates to paint and it's interesting how how you'll uh, get the get the words on there with the permanent marker and you have to let it let it dry for a day or so um, I have museum putty you can do, take a big squanch of museum putty with you hold on and then I have these and so maybe you're brave and you'll join me in this dream journaling so every morning before you move don't you even look at that cell phone write down a word or a fragment of what you dreamt because it's important for you and when you talk about grounding someone dreams you know of course are way up here but when you understand kind of where you've been all night and where your subconscious is gives you so much strength to then ground yourself and you know maybe this is speaking to you Perhaps it's not, and you're not an artist. I'll show you one more thing. I happen to love uh, this for me. is extremely personal. Genesis chapter 37. It's Vyashev. And I'm not even going to go over the verses, but they speak to me in a very personal way. So this isn't even about art, but I got a glass frame. I cut that out. I printed it, and I need that in front of me every day this is a verse that I read it's just something that's important to me but you may be so much more talented than me this is not my gift you know I mean I can do this and um, and I can put parchment in a bottle with stones that let me know that it is important but so many of you have even so much more talent than that here's one more thing I got this beautiful Torah porn pointer from one of my best friends in the whole wide world who brought it back um, from out of the country. And I went to James Avery and I had them put these lapis stones on a charm bracelet so that I could wrap it around my wrist and read Genesis like this. 
it's just something creative, but a lot of the things I make are so meaningful to me. But I'm going to show you better than what I could do. Get ready for this. Yeah, it's pretty great. That was my chef was just last week. I'm like, can you see it? So this is a painting, right? And it took a long time to dry. And it's called Devora. And here she is with her palm tree. Is this just exceptional? And here is the Hebrew lettering in gold. And here are the bees. And if you didn't know, Devora means bee. Oh, look at her. I get to see this every day too. And my daughter Caroline painted this. And uh, talk about experiential Judaism. And she had to read those verses several times to kind of let it sink into the skin so that she could feel that she knew Devorah to then paint her. And just amazing, isn't it? Jeff says the Torah pointer is called a Yod. That's absolutely right. And Yod means hand in Hebrew. Okay, moving this down. But I mean, let's say you've got this kind of talent. Wouldn't that be something if you took it to a place where you did something um, that was experiential and that was Jewish and spoke to your heart that way? Let me see if I covered it all. One last thing. I want my hands to do things. I really am a sensory, sensory person, you know. Um, master the Hebrew alphabet. This isn't even if you're going to read it or anything. And I just found this on Amazon the other day. I just want to draw and trace the letters. I'm not great at it, but I will tell you that um, I feel like there's just beauty and magic and something indescribable in even attempting to make the letters. Right. I mean, even to, to, and you have to go back to the basics sometimes because if you think, like, um, like this just morning when, when I was at Minion and Sheriff Israel, which I rarely get at the Sheriff Israel Minion, it's just. It, they go faster than I'm used to, and um, uh, it's almost like this helps me a lot to remind myself of the letters and go a little bit faster if necessary. And Jeff, thank you so much for like being here and going, hey guys, by the way, it's wonderful when our whole community can add to the discussion and the conversation, and we're having this um, transitional time from the work week into Shabbat, and all of a sudden, you know, here's Jeff saying, you know, here's an important Hebrew word, and we're looking at things together, and we're signing on, and we're kind of pulling our energies together before Shabbat, and um, I think at the end of the day, hopefully, it'll make Shabbat even more meaningful, and we'll be more prepared for what comes. And I think you're right. This is, it's, it gives you, <clears throat> it gives you an opportunity to try new things, and not to pass the day, so if we know, never want to wish the days away, but it also says, hey, listen, you tried this out, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, you go through the Torah, or you go through something important to you, you write it down, and voila, it becomes, it becomes permanent. Sometimes I take my little Torah, this one's just in English. Have you read some of this? I've read some of this, and then I'll just open it and think, what's there for me today? And you never, never know what could be there. And it might be the very thing that you've been waiting to hear or that you want to then take to your heart. And so I'm telling you all, I am going to put all of this stuff on my front porch bench. Tell your friends, come get it. I hope every ounce of it disappears. And I hope you get very busy in your little dream journal or your Torah in a bottle, or maybe you're going to glue a special stone right here where you can see it every day, like a tiny altar, any of these things. And actually, here's a bag of nice big black stones if you want to write on them in white. That's great. Hi, Alexis. I'm and so happy to And something simple, see you. just uh, uh, listen. Mm -hmm. Shema. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, Debbie. Before I knock off knock everything off. I know, we have a this. lot of stuff around um, here. This dream journal reminds me of this week's Torah portion. You're kidding. <laughs> How, what, would I kid a kidder? Of course not. This week's Torah portion is McHates, and McHates is the second Torah portion of all, the Joseph's story. And so this, of course, begins where the other one ended. And last week's ended off, Joseph is in jail. And McHates means at the end. So it's been about two years and now joseph mm -hmm. has been stuck in jail it's pitiful meanwhile 
Pharaoh had a couple of dreams, and Pharaoh calls his, um, and the taster, his food taster, Pharaoh's food taster says, by the way, he does, the food taster does not want to get in trouble. But he says, hey, look, there's a Hebrew in jail. Pharaoh's in jail with me. Please, Pharaoh, don't be bogged down with whatever I did. But he interprets dreams. Pharaoh calls him up, cleans him up, and everything looks great. They, uh, Joseph interprets the dreams, and the dreams, of course, he comes out and says, hey, listen, you can do the following, and you can be the greatest guy in the world. And by you know preparing, preparing for the drought that's about to come, and the Pharaoh says, uh, what would you do? And he says, this is how you do it. Then he ends up, ends up saying, who would be the kind of man who would do this? And uh, Joseph tells him, you need to be... I, he recommends Deloitte, but the Egyptian Deloitte company, it's a little bit different back then. <laughs> and so they says, well, you're the man. So all of a sudden, this dream guy, right? Keep your dreams together. This guy, that, that dreams became his entire misfortune, led to total prosperity for Joseph. Joseph gets wealth beyond his measure, right? He also gets a new house, gets a wife, his wife, that Pharaoh gives him is a high priest's daughter of all people. And then he even changes his name. So it's as if Joseph has a trans transformation. transformation and he becomes not Jewish anymore. Now he's Egyptian. The brothers come along. You know the story. The brothers come. He puts them, gets them in trouble. They come back. He says, hey, he doesn't. He says, you have a younger brother. The younger brother, they bring the younger brother. And it wasn't the first time he saw the brothers, but the second time he saw the brothers, he says, you mentioned an older father. Is he still alive? And he is overcome with emotion. So all of a sudden, Joseph, So his brothers don't recognize him. Because his brothers do not recognize him. Thank you. That's a big part of the story, because he recognizes his brothers, but brothers don't recognize him. Go figure. So the, the point of the story is, in my opinion, at the end, Nick hates, at the end of his being, you know, because jo Jacob could have, I mean, Joseph could have sent his dad a postcard. Hey, by the way, dad, I'm in Egypt. And uh, come see me when you're, you're in the neighborhood. But nothing happens. He said, because, and he even changes his son's names. Manasseh means, please let me forget my father's household. And uh, Ephraim means double portions, double fulfillment. And it's almost as if he doesn't want anything to do with this. But with all the wealth and everything he has, he, he can't take it. He sees his brothers and thinks of his family. So maybe this is the time that at the end, at, at the end of this holiday, maybe it's the time for this four portion to speak to us and say, is there someone that you forgot about? Is there a, a parent, a sibling, a friend or a coworker that maybe instead of waiting for them to show up and they don't recognize you to come reach out to them and say, listen, this is ridiculous. There's got to be something to fix this. That's it. Who or, grounds you? Who grounds you? Who yes. grounds you? Yeah. That's a little bit. We were on the same page today, and I exactly. didn't even really realize that till now. Just what, what is in your heart? What's really in your heart? And so maybe if we're a little less busy during this time, the holidays are not here, a little bit more quiet time, perhaps making a project or hanging on to a rock or recording a dream. Maybe any of these things will help us stay true to what's in our heart, what's right here, you know, within that spark and keeps us grounded. Debbie, thank you for all these things. Maybe some people will like it and they'll be out there ready for you. I hope so. We're going to go set it out right after this. It's part of what we're going to do for this Shabbat. Um, we've been very inspired by all who are doing things for everyone around the country and around the globe, feeding people, doing all kinds of mitzvot. And I looked in my closet today at all of these supplies that have not been in use in nine months. And I said, surely we can do better. You never know. And please post whatever you make. I want to be inspired by you. Please. Debbie, thank you. Thank you for your spirit. And thank, thank you for, you for your Torah portion. You Shabbat welcome. shalom. Shabbat shalom, Debbie. Shabbat shalom, everyone.
It's so wonderful to get to see everybody, even these few minutes before uh, the sun sets. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Jeff, if you come by, if you happen to still be on, uh, there's a special gift for you that's a little bit different. Shabbat Shalom.